Welcome to No FOMO Charts YouTube channel, live stream number eight. Today is Friday, August 28th, 2020. In this live stream video, I'm going to be talking about stock charts, crypto charts, and technical analysis education. Disclaimer, these videos, charts, media are for educational purposes only. This is not financial advice. So if anybody has a uh, particular stock, company, or crypto that you would like to see analyzed, uh, please let me know in the live chat box or the comments at a later time. Thank you. All right, so I'll try to make this uh, video shorter. I might do, I might do less of um, the global stocks today. Hold on, let me turn these alerts off so we're not getting a bunch of alerts during the stream. And while we're waiting for this, I think today we're going to add in some individual stocks. We're probably going to look at starting off with the USA stock indexes, then going into crypto, and then we'll end with some uh, USA individual stocks. So probably going to be looking at Apple, looking at Tesla, because those two stocks are having stock split on August 31st, which is Monday, basically, and the whole media is talking about that. So just waiting for this chart to load, and I'll bring it back on the screen. Here we go. Okay, so starting off with the DJI, the Dow Jones Index. All right, so Let's look at August. Okay, so August 1st is starting right here, this line. The uptrend is still intact. Very short-term uptrend though. Higher high, higher low, higher high. Seeking at the higher high. We got the gap fill right here. Let me turn these lines back on. You see what I mean, right? So if you look at the two big white lines, all right, so we have the price breakout, the support line test, this white line test, support held, we bounced up, broke resistance. You see that? It was just a little bit of sell-off around this red candle on the 25th. Then the rally continues to the area that I marked up here. Okay, This area down here, that's fine. That target didn't, did not hit because that was for a bearish breakdown setup, meaning this type of action. If this happened in the price, would have went down. All right, so if... Now that we're here in this gap zone, gap fill on the top here, basically what we want to watch out for is just another potential pullback, okay? So let me go ahead and erase. All our targets were hit, so I'm going to erase this, okay? Just for the first one here. And what's next? All right, so we get support and resistance next. All right, so zoom in first. We have the, we, uh, the support level right here at 28,165. Okay, this is from a different class. Let me change this to white. Support right here. Resistance of above 20,742. Right? We're literally in the gap zone. So I'm going to, this is the COVID-19 gap zone I'm talking about of the price. So let's extend that out. Okay. Literally inside here. So this is a stronger resistance point. And then we have the all, previous all-time highs as the two resistance points up here. So 29,570, if you look on the right, 29,354. This entire range, let's mark the range. The range is 28,885 down to 28,394. Okay, still in an uptrend, although losing a bit of volume, losing a bit of momentum if you're using momentum indicators. Okay, a little bit of weakness, but that doesn't mean the market's over. It just means that the intensity of the COVID-19 crash has 
essentially been priced in. This is this is the market pricing in COVID-19 fears and economic impact, life impact, right? But you'll see on other charts that the current price is very close or on certain other indexes has even surpassed where we stopped back in February 2020. So, so for me, at least a stock market, business as usual. All right, so let's get this trend line in and then we'll move on. So we have those support levels to watch out for. There's one more down here, the original one. Down there, okay, so it could pull back all the way down to 28.210 and we're still fine in an uptrend, right? If this happens, boom, still fine, still fine. Even if this happens, potentially still fine. But what we want to watch out for is right here, when you get this kind of action in the market, right? Reminds me a little bit of that. So we, I'm expecting some kind of pullback, a little bit possible. So let's get this trend line and our target, so we'll move on. So trend line, let's see, what are we seeing here? Sometimes I like to go to the close. Looks like it's a yellow. This trend line can make sense, right? I'll leave the yellow trend line. It's easier for people to see, okay? So an interesting kind of cross point right here where these two lines meet is right there. So that's 28,396 level. I could see it also dropping down here, possibly a bearish target. Number two, 28,149. Okay, I'll just leave that there. And then on the top side, it's not as clear. Yeah, not as clear. So we'll just leave the top side open. Although somebody could draw this, right? Somebody could draw that, but, or you could draw this wedge, but that's a little, it's a little out there for me in the technical analysis. So we'll just use the horizontal support and resistances. What happened to this window? There we go. Okay, so bullish target to the top side would be 28,894. Okay, then 29,376 range and then 29,634 range. Okay, so, but the big key about this is, remember, it's business as usual for the stock market. Okay, so the, the market goes up and it goes down. But the bigger picture is the trend. Still an uptrend, higher high, higher low, high low, high low, high low, although it's tightening. Okay, actually, let's just to give an example for next time, let's draw this trend line, this tight one right here. See that? All of a sudden, it's not huge range, it's in a much tighter range. So, yeah, these two targets on the bullish side, on this side, would match right over here. Okay, so we really want to watch out for those two targets the bullish targets on the top, the bearish targets on the bottom. This does not look over yet. It has to go in either direction. All right, so that's Dow Jones. Speed it up, go to S&P. So just to rewind from last week, we hit all three of the bullish targets that I drew on the charts. Okay, it's not me, but it's not just what I think in my mind. It's we're looking at psychological levels. Okay, so how did I know is going to be these three targets? 3,400 psychological price, 3,450 US dollar price, psychological, 3,500. So just go another $50 up for the next set of targets. $50, then there's a 3,600, and there's 3,650 to the top side. So I'm gonna erase this yellow. We already hit our targets. And again, these bearish targets, this would have made sense if we started losing momentum, then we probably hit these three targets, but it didn't break uh, bearish, did not break bearish, which is fine. Totally fine, right? If somebody's long, this is great, right? Also, we have this large gap resistance. So this is what I'm talking about. If you turn the, all the indicators off, you'll see here now that this was the price of the S&P 500 
right before the COVID-19 crash, stock market crash, February 19 and 20 of this year, 2020. We crashed down. But if you look at the price now, in August, that last week, we surpassed that mountain. So thanks to all the government uh, aid and what they're doing financially, right? The Federal Reserve institutions, okay? We, the price has recovered and broke out to all-time highs. That doesn't mean we're about to crash again. It just means that if we just step back and think about it, that, okay, the coronavirus fears the economic impact, the surprise, the suspense of this event has, in my opinion, finally been priced into the market. It's over. It was priced in in the crash here. How bad is the fear on this side? Okay, and then now this represents, yes, government support, but psychologically is most people are thinking everything's going to be fine. Everything's going to be fine in about a year or two. Once we get that vaccine, if it works, then everyone's going to you know, get back to work and then people will start making money and then people can spend that money and then people can invest that money, right? People can save that money. So that's the expectation of the COVID-19 has been priced in. And now we're at all-time highs, S&P 500. So with that in mind, with that in mind that we broke all-time highs, this is the new all-time high. We're looking at it right now. So let's get this trend line. This one doesn't matter anymore as much. Extend this one out, okay, like this. And then we just see, just it's going to ride the trend. So potential bearish targets, if there's a pullback, could be 3,400, 3450 and those are not random it's it's where the support levels are psychological levels are crisscrossing with this trend line right then bullish targets would be these three on uh the support level these are excuse me resistance levels i drew one two three on top so that's SP. moving on nasdaq nasdaq just really quick excuse me Right here, again, look at this NASDAQ rally. Some people might call this a bubble, right? Because if you study the charts and you look back at year 2099 and 2000, it looks some, a little bit like this, but that's what I mean. People love tech stocks. People love, Wall Street loves NASDAQ so much, the bulls. Everybody loves tech stocks. Why? Because it's Apple, it's Amazon, it's Google, it's Facebook, it's Netflix, Etc. Microsoft, it's all in there. It's all in there, right? So we hit our bullish targets to the upside. Okay. How did I know that was going to happen? Just $100 increments of once we break 11,000. This reminds me of Bitcoin, by the way. 11,000, 11,400, uh, excuse me, 11,400, 11,500, 600, and we're about to hit 11,700. We did not pull back down. So those bearish targets. Don't hold. But again, what you want to watch out for is there's not much support levels once you get past 11,100, this level, right? It just goes straight up. When it goes straight up like that and you don't have a stair step pattern, right? There's not much support levels to rest on. You're, you're basically somewhere around here, right? Definitely could pull back. Definitely could pull back. What do I mean? Definitely could pull back to the middle somewhere here. So 11,400 is interesting support level. 11,000, just going to call it 100 to make it easier. We're about to hit 11,700. Then 12,000 is the next big psychological. So these are, these are the four big levels. Let's draw some more. Right? So again, just kind of want to watch out a little bit for that. Right? We're not going to, it's not going to crash like that in one day. Right? There's circuit breakers in the stock market, but I'm saying, if it's going shooting up like that, it's momentum. You throw something up in the air, eventually it's going to lose momentum and come back down. At least a little bit. Okay, so we get our... Those are our uh, resistance and support levels for the current price. Just remember, again, with S&P 500, NASDAQ is at all-time highs for two months. Once it broke out in July, okay? Talking about here, right? Once it broke out in July, NASDAQ... Lovers, tech lovers, gonna push this market up. 
All right, so the big, big support level is way down here at 9,900. 9,900 and 10,000. Okay, those are big psychological that is now very strong support. Because it has one, two, three, four, five touch points. Looking up here, 10,800 has one, two, three, four touch points. And then there's not much up here. So it's kind of blue sky, blue sky breakout territory, meaning it's, it's up in the sky right now. For now, relatively speaking. So let's get this trend line up. Bottom side trend line. It's not quite 100% accurate, but this is the general trajectory. General trajectory. Kind of similar to the Dow, right? Because look at this. It's, it's a much tighter range now. Okay. So the X, the, if, if it's normal trading, presuming there's not going to be some kind of national or global emergency. I mean, looking forward, though, we got elections approximately three months from now, right? So somewhere over here in November, right, you're going to see some volatility in the market, right, that first and second week of November, but probably. But for right now, in Going into September, these are just really super obvious targets right here. 12,000, okay? That trend line and the resistance line crisscross. If it comes down, right? 11,150, bearish target 2, bearish target 1, 11,400, right? Let's get a, a larger target up here, like a 12,200, okay? That's bullish target number 2, so right there, right? It's still an uptrend. It's been an uptrend. For a long time. All the way, if you want to call from April, nonstop rampage, bullish uptrend. Like I'm saying, people love NASDAQ, people love tech. Let's check the weekly just for any potential clues. This is a weekly chart, one week. Every candle is one week long. Still in a weekly uptrend. Check the monthly. Interesting. If you look at a monthly, there hasn't been any monthly pullback yet. So, very interesting. But if we're looking at this, just weekly chart, right? Higher, tighter, higher highs and lows. High, low, high, low, high, low, high. So I'm expecting some kind of low at some point. Maybe it's going to happen in November, right? The bigger low, right? But looking forward, just in three days from now, we got the Tesla and Apple stock split. So we want to watch out for that. We'll get to that. Okay, moving on, Russell 2000, RUT. So really quick on the analysis charts, same similar to Dow, rallied, break through this resistance, fell down to just support, held that support level, and we're bouncing, okay? So this yellow box, again, where's the yellow box from? There is a larger resistance cluster up here, which I got that from over here. If you look here, there's multiple this action. You get a cluster of prices, multiple resistance levels, another resistance mountain, what I like to call price mountain, right? So you get it here again. You draw it right here. Resistance, support, bouncing up to resistance again. All right, so to clean this chart up, make it easier on everybody, basically it's stuck between 1,604, 1,551, right there. All right, to make it even easier, let's draw a parallel channel. So we get the midline in there. Okay, these are the two extreme points for now. Boom, we get the midline in there. That's significant, we broke through that midline. Okay, very short-term traders are looking at this. Very, very short-term breakout setup, okay, but I don't wanna get that short-term on this channel. All right, so the next resistance levels 1600, 1650, 1700. Three targets to the top side. Targets to the downside, all right, would be here, 1550. You see this cluster prices, 1500, this, this, and this, that's 1500, then 1450. Uh, maybe a little higher, 1465, to get a more accurate cluster of prices on the bottom side. So now we're just stuck between there, okay? But if you look very closely, 
the uptrend is there, but it's very weak. It's actually consolidating for August. The, the bigger picture, like if you zoom out and you compare, okay, this is uptrend starting from here, consolidation sideways, triple bottom or double bottom, okay? Consolidation, rally, consolidation. Again, finding support right here. All right, so let's draw that trend line on the bottom side like that, okay? So this is not random. It's it's a market saying, okay, we need to find some support. We found some support in this area, right? The 1550, okay? So if it's gonna turn into a real uptrend, then expect I'm expecting a higher high. Where? First touching 1600 with the potential target of 1650. This thing breaks down the Russell 2000, immediately looking at like 1525 pullback, like I want to see this. It, it's got to be confirmed downtrend. It's got to do this. Start downtrending, break down through the support line to the bottom side. 1500, 1475. Okay. Next, the VIX, VIX volatility S&P 500 index. Check out this right here. This is this is one. This is more of a day trading setup. It didn't go 40, 50 percent like last time. We went 70 percent last time, right? But this is a real setup. I drew these lines. I'm saying there's multiple support levels here at 2190. Resistance was in the 24 to $25 range, exactly where these candles, candle wicks ended up, right? But that's just one pop. Look at the S&P, they're just talking about this right here. So the market had a little bit more volatility reaction and probably traders jumping on that. But now the price came back down to the support level. So. With that in mind, okay, let me clean this up a little bit. With that in mind is, the big question is, is this pattern gonna play out? Are we really gonna get a breakout, retest, continuation pattern? Is it going to happen? The market will show us if it's gonna happen. If this happens, then all these targets are in play, 31, 34, 36, bullish targets. But if it breaks down, then the immediate support right here, like I drew last time, that $22, $21 range, this yellow line, and this entire yellow box gap support, strong support, right? In a really, really bearish scenario for the VIX, you could just lose all this, 19, and crash back down to 13, okay? But that's, that's pre-COVID-19 world levels, right? So we're not, we're not really there yet, but watch this support at 21. 19, now we just go in dollar increments, 18, okay? So we just wanna watch out for this. Okay, yes, there is some kind of double bottom support, triple bottom support down here for the VIX, possible upside down head and shoulders, right? So if we measure that, 7%, we went 7%. So the next target, 7% up is 26. So that's the immediate, immediate short-term target, number one, right there. So just want to watch out for that. VIX, just remember that VIX, it doesn't work 100% of the time. So we can't really only use charts on VIX. Okay, next we go into gold, XAU, USD, gold. All right, so what are all these lines? All right, so basically somebody's watching this fresh, okay? Gold been in, has been in an uptrend for 1.5 years. Then I pulled out this channel, right? Drew the channel. These targets have been hit. All right. Now what's happening? Well, after the, a large FOMO global rally, bullish rally on gold. Okay, we hit the top of the channel, came down to bounce off the middle heart line, half line, this red line, this one. Okay, red line bounce up to test the bottom of this, which is now resistance, rejected. Bears trying to take control, push it down, rejected by the bulls. Bulls gonna buy this price back up. Okay, it was like this, they tug in war, tug of war. Bears want to go down, bulls want to go up. People are afraid, they're gonna sell. People are greedy, they wanna buy, right? The, psycholog psycho <laughs> the psychology is there. The psychological aspect of the charts in play, on display on this chart. Also, there is a, a bit of, it's not a perfect pennant, okay? But 
the general psychology is there is it's tightening. Okay, if you want to look at this like a giant, like a giant flag, okay, you look at it like this. Can you see that? In the yellow triangle, okay. If so, if this, it's kind of sideways, but if this is a giant flagpole, you see that? Now, now it all makes sense. All right, so with this in mind, just remember it's tightening, it's tightening, so I'm going to expect a break soon, okay? Typically, it's usually a continuation pattern, but again, just getting a feel for the psychological aspect of the market is it's a little bit losing momentum. You don't hear so many people hyped on gold right now like it was one or two months ago, right? But... Other indicators showing us, yes, there is some momentum, there's support right here, okay? We might get continuation. Let's bring out some other indicators for some clues, right? Holding the support, holding the support line, moving averages, right? Holding that pivot, right? So, gold's questionable, right? If we just go purely off momentum, okay? This looks like a cooling off period, finding support around 1925, right? Now, if we just measure this, let's measure the mid, I like to measure the midpoint for a more conservative, reasonable target, 5%. If this is the breakout right here, if this is the breakout, 5% would be a retest of 2070, the top resistance right here. So this bullish target, number one. If it breaks down for some kind of global fundamental reason, the 5% would be 1850. So 1860, the bottom of this wick, this candle wick right here, this is bearish target, number one. And then these two original circles, this is the top of the channel. You see this channel? So 2100 and the bottom here is 1800. So now we have, four, we have two targets on top, two targets on bottom. And that's basically what we need to see happen, okay? Losing a little bit of momentum, but it's still in its uptrend. All right, so all it is is it's just we need the big players. We need some momentum. The big players to come in and say, let's get this breakout on gold or break down on gold. Then we're going to see some reaction with retail, with the rest of the population, right? People trading at home. That's what I'm saying. So next, silver, XAG. USD, XAG, USD, silver. So right here, silver still maintaining a stronger momentum, okay? If you look at this, I drew a much larger triangle once we this resistance was set, okay? It's like a wedge, okay? Now we're stuck. We were stuck at this resistance level where? Around $27 to $28 on the top side. Still trying to maintain some kind of uptrend. So very, very short-term trend line is this one right here. Okay, very, very short term trend line. Right there. So these all these targets are still in play. This one we could go a lot faster on in terms of, again, momentum is neutral right now. For now, a little bit on the high side, but neutral that a, another breakout is possible. So if we break out bullish, $30, $30. So what percent is that? That is 6.5% possibly from the current price right now. It's a weekend right now. So a lot of trading is gonna go quiet till Monday or Sunday night, Monday, right? $30, target number one. Target number two, let's look at, is there a price? Yeah, look at the previous prices. I'm on a monthly chart now. That's why I do all these targets from the monthly side. So now we trust those targets. So now 32. All right, this is if we have a good bullish scenario, if we get this breakout, if this turns into ascending triangle pattern, which it sort of looks like, very, very short term, right? The breakout, possible. But if we break down these two targets on the bottom side of 24 and 21, still remain intact. All right, moving along, the last couple ones here, the US dollar currency index, DXY, DXY. So right here, this support at 92.11, 92.25 is holding, it's holding, okay? So I'm gonna raise this target here, raise this one. 
Interesting, interesting setup on the bottom. So, finding some kind of temporary bottom on the dollar currency index. Interesting, as this is inversely, has some inverse relation with the S&P 500 and stock market in general. So if this is starting to bottom out, it's questionable. It's questionable, meaning psychologically, what are people going to do with their money in August and September? Actually, in September, right? Because if you think about it, think about it. Just try to think about the average family right now with kids in the USA and maybe other parts of the world, depending on the schedule, is school has started. School has started, right? So where are people, where are people going to put their money right now when their kids are starting school? That's something to think about, right? Supplies. Office supplies like paper, pens, computer, books. Now with all this remote technology, probably maybe even like home furniture, like retail, study rooms, study areas. It's been like that for like six months, but I'm saying as people are going back to school, now it's getting, and now they really need it. Like I saw that uh, announcement from the HP CEO. He's saying, we never sold so many HP computers ever. This is the most we've sold at HP computers. So there is that demand, okay? But how's that, how does that relate to this is just think about where are people going to put their money right now? They're going to put their money in stocks? Are they going to sell stocks, especially that were a little bit overextended? Not, o not overextended, but a little bit extended on some of these indexes, right? Dow Jones, S&P, NASDAQ. And then we just look at the health of the DXY. It's like, hmm, finding a bottom. So it's stalling, stalling. Are people going to sell? They want their money back? We'll see. We'll see. So these two targets, they still remain. There's actually the first mini target is right here, 94. Right? Holding the support right here, $92. Then if you look way left on the price, there's a 91, there's a 90. Okay. Next, we got US oil. Yes, US oil, this very messy chart, but let's just examine it really quick. So all I was drawing was just simple resistance and support targets. Okay, so all the targets hit in terms of Boom, we hit this, resistance, pull back down to this triangle support, and now we're holding, all right? Let's just clean this up because with oil, I think it's very simple. Back in May, April, May, June, there was immense hype, like I was saying last week, about reopening, about travel, and then we got the what I call the 1.5 wave continuation of infections, COVID-19 infections. Then people are, people are starting to say online, USA opened up too early or too slow, depending depending on their what per, their perspective, right? But if you just look at this on oil, okay, and what I've heard about, you know, just thinking about like car traffic or foot traffic and sales traffic and all all those metrics that I've read about and heard about online is is that people are trying to get some kind of normal semblance of life back together for the past like three months especially okay the first like three months of the COVID-19 okay crash just pure panic pure panic in relation to oil pure panic pure sell-off nobody knows what's going to happen major problems with demand supply storage contango problems then we get some positive expectation psychology people saying people thinking Oh, we're going to reopen. Travel's going to be fine. Also, price is really cheap. Then, remember, this is US oil ETF. It's not the price of oil. It's not the price of gasoline. It's the it's the average price of the futures contracts for oil. Okay? So, it's not it's not just like $30 a barrel mentality. It's not what this totally that's totally not what US oil is. The way I approach oil is just almost like the DXY, it's like psych psychology. But more importantly, what's the fundamentals of oil? What's the demand supply of oil? What's Are people traveling more or less? How many airplanes are flying? Those are, you know, those are the kinds of questions, right? Like how many companies need oil? 
big, big companies, industrials, right? But then to simplify it all, we could just use a line like this, right? This is still my upside breakout target from like two months ago, right? Just slowly creeping up towards this target. Support holding almost every single time. Still an uptrend, although it's losing a little bit of momentum, right? But this is oil, okay? So it's not, can't base it on charts. It's going to technical charts only, right? So very simple. Let's look at our bullish and bearish scenarios. Bullish scenario, okay, there's resistance right here at 3120. But more importantly, if you just want to target the top of this area, this uh, triangle, 31, 77, support, 3050, they're down here at 30. Okay, two bearish. Bullish targets up here. Got to look left a little bit. Okay, next one up here at 3250. Right there. Right? Natural gas, UNG. Natural gas, UNG. All right, so natural gas in an uptrend. Why? Because fundamentals, demand of gas is actually up according to new sources. Right? In terms of gas use up electricity use up it's very hot very hot people cooking at home right to some degree right but it's mainly also warren buffett made a big investment on natural gas somewhere around here so that could have just been the catalyst right there alone right so many catalysts mainly fundamental and some and some technicals but we hit our target okay how do i know this is going to happen well it's an uptrend and there is a resistance cluster yellow box up here. So we hit our target. Higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, essentially. So I'm looking for a higher low. It could be a tight one. Could be just coming back down to $14 and attempting to break out to 15 Possible, right? Look at the monthly and the weekly for clues. Monthly, boom, nice reversal. The price. Weekly, again, hmm, a little suspicious. A little suspicious, right? Looking at the price, recent one or two year price history. A lot of green, okay, not many pullbacks in the weekly, so we want to watch out for that. Want to watch out for that. Interesting. So, again, right here, $13 resistance. Right here, $14, excuse me, $13 support, $14 support. $12 support, $11 support. Then if it's going in dollar increments, then just again, resistance up here, $15, 16 17 Verify that on the left side to get exact numbers, like fifteen sixty nine. This one's a little questionable. Maybe sixteen twenty five, right? But again, if we penetrate through the resistance zone up here, then just move it up a little bit, right? or just expand it a little bit. This resistance now zone can be anywhere from 14 all the way to 15. $1 resistance right here. All right, so just wanna watch out for this a little bit, right? Natural gas losing momentum on the charts, losing momentum and volume on the charts, so wanna watch out for some potential pullbacks, right? Potential pullback could be here, 13.25, 12, and 11. Right? It doesn't look like a lot, but pullback like that is like 8% to possibly 16% pullback over time. Right? If this starts topping out and we go into a downtrend, then, you know, there's, there's this target all the way down here at 11, right? Because what's kind of from the bottom to the top here, 64%, you go down halfway somewhere over here, right? So what is that? It's like 9 15 so it's like 12 dollars area is that midpoint right just mark this as the midpoint over time it would be interesting if this if this really intersects over here then that would be very interesting for technical analysis okay next all right moving on that was about the uh, 40 minutes okay so we'll try to speed this up now we're going to go into actually let's switch it up let's go into some individual stocks right now okay because crypto we talked about crypto so much. Let's go into some individual stocks, and it, and then 
Uh, uh, we might not do so many global stocks today. Let's go individual. What am I talking about? What am I talking about here? Let's go, let's, let's look at some tech stocks. All right, so we got Apple split coming up, stock split. Okay, Tesla, let's get a Tesla on here. We got a Tesla stock split coming up on Monday. Five to one. All right, got Tesla on here. Got Amazon. We got Apple. Let's get Netflix. Let's get Facebook. Let's just look at the Fang family, Fang stocks. Somewhere in there, got Google in here. Got Microsoft in here. All right, let's look at these. Starting off with uh, Apple. Apple, let's erase everything. All right, so first thing, got a lot of, so these red vertical lines, these are the earnings breaks. So for now, let me just turn those off. Because, there we go. It looks a little messy with those on the chart, but really need to pay attention to those. A lot though. All right, so first thing I'll do with Apple is just zoom out and understand the short, uh, not not the short, but the long-term history of Apple, where there's a monthly chart. Every candle, every bar is one month of price action. So long time ago, okay, probably before anyone watching this was born, right? Right? Apple went, let's see, <laughs> IPO'd at 50 cents a share in February, in somewhere in January, December 1980. 1980. Okay? But then I would say Apple didn't really rise to prominence until like mid 2000s. Right? Yes, a lot of computer enthusiasts were using it in the 90s. But in terms of when did, like, think about it, when did iPhone? iPod, MacBook, MacBook Pro, iMac, Mac Pro. When did all that stuff start coming out? Right here. Mid, mid 2000s was like the boom of Apple. Just read up on the history, right? And it's, you can see it on the charts too. It's like, if you just think about it, it's like, well, okay, there's this cluster, prices, right? Then where did the price really explode? Right here. So where, where was that? Like 2005. 2005 is where the app, Apple took over and exploded. I was going to say the Apple, but Apple, right? So with that in mind, with that in mind, all right, you can even draw a gigantic monthly uptrend, I mean, uh, trend line like that, and one on the top too, okay? These are not random. It's using price history to get these bigger targets. This is what the professionals do in terms of the investors, right? And traders too. So now it doesn't, it's not so random anymore, right? If you zoom in, you're going to look at, boom, right here, boom, boom, three, four support levels, even right there, all right? I'm going to put a big 600. Well, this is going to change in three days, but we'll put one up there on the top side, right? But if you look at it, if you look at this, Apple almost hitting its monthly trend line target to the top side. Let's tighten this down a little bit now that we're zoomed in. Tighten it down. Okay, so the big 550 to 600 range, like five, uh, let's see, like 500 to $600 range is where we're starting to top out. It basically topped out at 500. All right, so media support, 500. And then if we look at the stock split, let's see, it's a four to one stock split. Let me get you an accurate number. All right, so probably somewhere in the 125, 120 range, uh, this this share price is going to reset to on uh, August 31st. It should, okay, according to your news. So with that in mind is if we look at this giant monthly uptrend, right, can even pull back all the way down to 326, relatively speaking, and still be an uptrend, right, as long as it holds. Now we start zooming in. Weekly, weekly. Kind of want to watch out for this because there is a weekly five wave LA pattern to my eyes. One, two, three, four, five. So in a weekly uptrend, it's possible we're nearing the end of the fifth wave. 
possibly. What does that mean? If it's normal trading and not like FOMO speculation, extreme trading, possible ABC pullback. Correction. It doesn't mean the uptrend's over. It just means pullback, right? Possible, right? So there's a there's something suspicious going on right here. Also, we have to think about it from fundamentals is if anyone just, like I was telling uh, someone else this week is, if this is a stock split announcement and now we're already up 40%, or we're up 25, 20%, like if somebody bought it on this market open and held it to here, up 28%, some people, traders, are going to sell. Okay, that's where you're seeing a little bit of cluster, seeing this resistance right at 500, then pulling back a little bit. Let me zoom in. We're on a one day chart now. Each candle equals one day of trading, one day session. Right, so turning into a bit of a, a little bit, it's not quite a flag or pennant yet, but just finding resistance right here. So media support 492. And these are all gonna change, that's why I'm not giving such hard numbers, 515, right? It's the general psychology of like, wait a second, wait a second. If you look at here, let's get a short-term daily trend line inside Tesla, I mean, excuse me, inside Apple, inside Apple, excuse me, I'm thinking too far ahead, right? There is also this uh, wedge pattern right here, right? So media, like where's the gap support? 400, okay? Now we're getting real into the analysis, right? Of support and resistance and trend, right? So still an uptrend, this is 2020, right? Still an uptrend, hitting its $500 target that was set like three years ago, right? As a potential target for Apple, boom, hit the support, hit the support, still uptrending, but a little bit overextended. Where I'm seeing the support is 432, 450, right? Percentage-wise, because these numbers are going to change relative, percentage-wise, that could be potential pullback of up to 10% down. That's a lot. That's a lot. For Apple, that's that's huge pullback potential. But that's over that's not one day, I'm saying. But it's over time, right? If this if, if it turns to a sell-off and then this happens, then coming down to 450, relatively speaking, right? That's still 8% down. But again, this is Apple, like Ameri one of America's favorite stocks and companies globally too, right? So maybe, maybe that's not exactly going to happen, right? So that's why we turn to other indicators. So if you look at this, a little bit of a double top on the momentum, the RSI, right? So this is not good. First off, that setup's not good. Losing momentum on the MACD, that's not good either on a daily chart. Okay, so now that we know that this is starting to lose momentum here, this could be the start, this could be the start of the topping out of the rocket, is what I'm saying. If you throw anything in the air, like I always say, at some point it's gonna top out and pull and come down. That doesn't mean it's gonna crash back down for stocks. It just means losing a little momentum, maybe we're gonna take a break somewhere. And that's where you get this stair step pattern. Right, take a break. It's gonna take a break. Find support where buyers are gonna say, no, no, no. Price is too cheap. It's too discounted. It's too good not to buy this. Then they could do this. Re rinse and repeat. Rinse and repeat. All right. As long as we have our wits about us, our mind. Okay. So, uh, where were we? So right here. All right. So if we use moving averages as supports, then immediate support for eighty one. All right, this is a more likely spot for it to pull back. That's only, that's like 3%, it's doable. 3%, okay, that's doable. Normal, but that's just normal business as usual pullback. So somewhere around there, you got just mark on the chart, it should save for next time, this target here, right? If you have extreme pullback, look, it's, it's, it's right here, right? But that hasn't happened, that hasn't happened since the COVID crash. This is Apple, one of the big companies, right? So I'm not expecting to crash back down you know, 35%, it's probably not going to happen unless something extremely bad has to happen to the company, right? Which is probably not going to happen, okay? So those levels are starting to match up now. Now the clues are all there. The clues are all there. So the big spots, bearish 450, okay? Bearish 480, if that happens, though, to targets. So that's negative three to negative nine. There's probably a negative six in there as well. 
So anywhere between negative three and nine percent could be the pullback if it comes down. But if it continues up like a last minute rampage, like the stock split, let's play the flip scenario, right? If the stock splits and then all of a sudden all retail investors want to buy it, then we're probably going to go higher. If that happens, right? But just got to remember with stocks, the news is already priced in. This is the market saying we already know about the stock split. Everybody who's in the market and trading this, we already know. Everybody knows already. So the stock market is a forward-looking device. It's going to price in the knowledge and the information way ahead of time. And then it's, it, so this could turn into a sell the news event. As soon as the stock split news happens on Monday, people might sell. At least some experienced traders are going to sell. Not everything. They're not going to liquidate their Apple position. It's just whatever this tr swing trade was, then take some profit, right? And then when it comes down to discount, they might buy more somewhere down here in this range. Right? Maybe like a hundred dollars, like 110, 120, right? But again, let's get this bullish scenario on the charts. If it goes up, then I'm expecting somewhere if we do just do the reverse, if it's gonna come three to nine percent down, then three to nine percent up is also another scenario. Five fifteen, bullish target number one, six percent, five twenty-five, nine percent. 545. This one particular on the top, because that matches that monthly trend line, that four, that 545, that plus 10%, relatively speaking. Okay. All right. Tesla, Tesla, everybody's favorite company right now for a long time, for like 2020. Actually, for like a year in the stock market, it's like everybody's favorite company to trade, either long or short, bull or bear, down or up. Right, so let's uh, erase that. That's for a different class. Uh, all right, starting with monthly Tesla, IPO'd on somewhere in July 10th, or excuse me, July 2010, June to July 2010. Starting out, it, it crashed down to a low price of about somewhere around $15 a share. All right, so then if you just look at the chart, the Tesla hype. The, the mega Tesla hype happened in two waves. It happened in 2013, according to the charts, in 2019. Okay. Yes, Tesla had some issues with the, com the corporation and the, and the quality control, product control, right? That's what this was. Remember, there's some CEO news. Remember all that stuff happening in the past like one or two years? But then we're talking about hype. We're talking about FOMO. All right, so... What I'm seeing here is there's already a five-wave Elliott monthly pattern that's already basically been completed, right? You're talking about here. Boom, two, three, four, five. We're in the end of the fifth wave uh, approximately, right? And we have a stock split, five to one stock split. So to give you a general idea of what that is, Four hundred forty-two dollars, right? This this price is gonna just suddenly change on Monday to four four hundred forty-two dollars, right? Yes, yeah, two thousand two hundred thirteen. That that seems way too high dollar value wise for Tesla, just psychologically. If you think about it, it's like wait a second, Tesla is like all is bigger than Apple in terms of well, I'm talking about in like what kind of like the history and the, the global impact, Tesla almost as big as Amazon, you know, questionable, right? But profit-wise, in terms of expectation-wise, in terms of hype FOMO-wise, I would say yes, yes. That's why it's up at 2200 2, About to go back down to 442 But again, we got to watch out. There's a monthly Elliott wave pattern. Powerful. Right, expecting some kind of ABC correction to occur over time. It might take like three months, could take six months, could, could take a year, but we'll see. We'll see. Again, it depends on how hard the FOMO and the demand is for Tesla shares. And I think it's pretty high right now. So, again, let's get the uh, support and resistance level. Resistance 2342. Two. Again, there's not much support. 
Okay, there's one down here that's like on a monthly at 669, but we gotta we gotta go in more for this to get some more accurate ones. 941, 1404, 1728. All right, so now those are pretty marked in. There's one down here too. There's probably one up here at the $3,000 range as well. So let's see if we could draw some trend line. We cannot on the monthly. Weekly, yes, but it's very, very separated. Okay, there. what I like to do here is sometimes I cascade it, right? So if there's an extreme problem in Tesla, then if you look how much it could drop. I'm talking extreme, extreme, extreme examples, right? And people think it's never going to happen, but it's like, well, COVID-19 happened, like, right? Once in a lifetime, but that's it just shows that stocks could crash down negative 50% depending on the global situation. So here we go. This this third one up here makes the most sense. Okay. This one makes the most sense. All right. I'll make it big so everyone knows what we're talking about here. This large one on the top right here. So again, this price where the support level and this trend line crisscrosses. Always interesting to me. Always interesting to me. Seventeen hundred dollars, relatively. The resistance at twenty five hundred, resistance at three thousand, support at fourteen hundred, right here. Right. So, let's see what we got going on here. Yeah, let's just use those two. Just keep it simple, right? Maybe we'll check out some indicators. All right, so this is not looking so great. Not looking so great. A little bit of short-term momentum loss right here. So again, it's looking like it's about to fold over a little bit. But again, it depends. That can get reversed if there's any news. That can get reversed if there's big, big global FOMO hype. But again, I'm expecting even just this right here in terms of 64 right halfway about there about 1800 might be an interesting support level for tesla relatively speaking so that would be divided by five about 360 okay that sounds reasonable okay so we just want to watch out for that right tesla is not technically cheap okay based upon the price history of just 2020 where was it cheap it was cheap over here it was cheap over here. Now it's basically 500% more expensive than it was in the bottom of the COVID-19 crash. Even at the top, pre-COVID-19 crash, right here, even at the top, it's 161% up, right? So we just want to watch out for that. Remember, these stock blitz, stock splits, what are these companies trying to do? We have to think about it. What are they really trying to do? All right, next, Amazon. We'll, we'll finish up here. Let's do Amazon. Okay, I'm not going to go as extreme in depth because I was doing the stock split companies, but to look real quick, monthly, Amazon, a very, very strong monthly uptrend for the past like 20 years, 10 years, right? Or even since like, uh, I would say, yeah, 10 years, strong uptrend. Weekly uptrend, still intact, except yes, someone could say there is a LA way five, five way pattern there, possible, right? But in the daily, if you just do this, Get your support levels, resistance, 3458, support, 2915, right? Trend line here, bottom side, draw it in. See, you're riding that trend line. You see that? Riding the trend line up. Also, there's one up here, trend line boom, like this, okay? In a very tight upward wedge, sandwiched between support, Amazon. All right, just real quick, look at some indicators. Again, Amazon losing a little bit of momentum, but it's not over, okay? It's not over. There's no global catalyst that's probably going to make us crash for the rest of this year. Probably, okay? Probably. The only thing that's coming up for America is, yes, COVID-19 vaccine. We need medications. We need treatments, vaccines. School is starting, holidays, and then we have... Uh, the November election. So the presidential election is like the biggest catalyst on the horizon. All right, so 
let's see right here again support levels okay if we're using moving average for support 3314 also it's hitting this price cluster right here even hitting this price cluster right here 3200 right there so again the immediate crisscross of the supports right here 3314 very interesting spot but just in my opinion, just one guy's opinion, I mean, I think Amazon needs a stock split because 3,400, who, what beginner retail trader is going to be able to buy that or buy a lot of shares of that is what I'm saying. So it'd be interesting if Amazon does a stock split within the next couple of years, but they don't really have to though. So again, upside target, interesting way up here 4000 seems impossible but again a lot of institutions are the reason why this price is so expensive okay it's not just purely retail if you look at the ownership if you go look it up the institutional ownership percentage amazon pretty high it's pretty up there okay so again let's see what's three fit three four five eight right now then three three thirty five hundred Next spot. Okay. Just want to watch out for it. It's just riding this trend line. Once this trend line gets violated to the downside, tested and broken, that's going to be very, very, it's going to be interesting for Amazon because unless it recovers like this sideways, this like Dow Jones, right? Sideways, then boom, sideways recovery and then breakout, right? This itself was like ascending triangle. Just draw it before I move on. Boom, like that. See that? Ascending triangle breakout, right? So let's actually use those targets. This is good targets right here. If we use this, if we use it as a uh, 8%, so from the breakout 8%, we actually basically hit that 3470, right? 3470. So now that that target's complete, I, mean, I guess there's another one up here if you wanna go another 8%. It's not impossible. 3732, right? That's the Bullish target number two, bullish target number one is up here somewhere at 3450 range. If we're gonna pull back, immediate support, 3319, 3200. So if if Amazon and Apple and Tesla start folding over and coming down, you can't see what I'm doing with my hands, but if it starts folding over, just pulling back a little bit, right? Then probably the entire market itself is probably gonna follow, right? You even wanna watch Bitcoin at the same time. Right, there's always these relationships. All right, let's go to uh, let's do let's let's speed this up. All right, so Google, I'm not going to do the whole monthly, weekly thing. You could try to practice on your own if you want to practice that, or just request it at another time. So here we go again. We're just down the day chart. All right, so media support and resistance. Resistance right now, current resistance 1642, psychological 1700 on the top. Support to the downside. 1600 this previous all-time high uh, 1525 and then bottom support right here 1470 so those are the support levels trend line let me start from here okay riding that trend line see that there's also one over here from we could do this right we could say it's a breakout we could say it it's possible right so if it's breaking out double check the momentum indicators really quick Okay, not as bad as Amazon, not as bad as Amazon, right? Or Apple in terms of the momentum loss. But again, could totally, could totally pull back down here just to follow suit and retest. Boom, like this, right? Boom, 16.10, interesting spot. 16.10, interesting spot, okay? We gotta watch it for this setup. If, it's, if we're still in a bull market, then boom, retest up here possibly or boom break down back to here so support target number one bearish is right here 1600 1560 bullish targets 1700 and 17 so 1750 up here okay so just watch those those four targets microsoft same deal okay look this is the previous all-time pre-covid high all right price high so this is what i'm saying is that COVID-19 impact, it's its the fear, the supply chain impact. It's not over, but it, in the stock market, at least. Oh, excuse me, knock the mic over. 
me, let me start over. So basically, the pre-COVID-19, excuse me about that, pre-COVID-19 crash has happened, right? Boom, right here. To, and then the recovery, subsequent recovery, right? So what I'm saying right here is that supply chain, the fears, the economic impact, it's become normal part of life now. You just go outside, you, pe you see some people wearing masks or gloves and nobody's questioning it anymore. You did the same thing a year ago, probably like people call somebody on you, right? Right? Or tell the manager that happened to me once. Have a store, right? That's what I'm saying. That doesn't happen anymore. It's becoming a normal part of life, right? COVID-19, six feet away, right? At least in USA, right? But if you look at the price here, what I'm ultimately what I'm saying is the stock market has priced it in already, breaking out to all-time highs. Expectations of saying, you know what? Prospects going to be good in one or two years from now. Everything looks fine. Once we get the vaccine, it's going to be fine. Then look at this. People bullish on Microsoft. Loving Microsoft. Also, they had some pretty good earnings, if I remember correctly. Remember correctly. So... That, so it's not just all technicals. Remember, we're doing stocks, so fundamentals actually matters way, way more. But technicals can give us some, some targets to aim for. So resistance at 230, right? 215, 200, support now, support, support, right? Trend line, still an uptrend. We could draw this one too. Okay, so it's not it's not quite violated, penetrated through. Although we could, if you want to do it like that. So if you want to do it like that, this would make sense. Why this little stick up here is hitting with this Doji candle? This indecision is like, oh, 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 we're above here. So then, if that happens, if that happens, pull back down to where's the support? Right here, immediate support. Right. I mean, super immediate targets is right here. Two twenty six, two thirty one on the top. 222 on the bottom, 216, and then the bottom of this, right? So these are two targets we're looking at right now. Check the momentum. Again, not as bad, not as bad. Microsoft and Google are more similar. Amazon, Apple, and Tesla a little bit overextended. I think the hype for those was just got a little bit out of hand, right? Pullbacks are possible. I'm not saying it's going to happen. It's possible. Okay, Netflix next. One day chart. Right? Boom. Resistance right here. 570, 580, 575. Right? 550. Support. 509. 481. 460. 437. Right? Trend line. Boom. Like this. Right here. Okay? This one a little bit more tricky, right? Just riding the trend line. And then what is this? It's supposed to be a W pattern, but it's happening in the middle of here, this price action. It's a little confusing, a little confusing, right? Which means that if the chart looks confusing, that means the investors are confused. The traders are confused. Or the company news is like, oh, it's good and then it's bad and it's good and then it's bad, right? So that's a relationship between earnings and fundamentals, right? But this is where we use the targets to our advantage. So we have this trend line. Okay, that's fine. This one's a little more tricky, right? All right, so if it pulls back, where's it going to pull back to? Well, it looks like it's coming down right now. It's already flagging this intraday flag, right? This, right? So fine, if it's, if it's a flag pattern, if it breaks out, immediate bullish target, 550, retest to 580. Simple. If it breaks down, 509, then this point, 490, right? Somewhere in that range, right? So... Again, it's it's Netflix not losing as much momentum as the other ones, but if these th other three companies, Amazon, Tesla, Apple, start pulling back, coming down, then you're probably going to see the whole tech sector pull back a little bit. Okay, last one for this one on tech, Facebook. All right, so Facebook, damn, resistance, 300, 305, supports, 279, 268, 245, 222, 205, right? Get a trend line up in there. 
running, boom, right here. There's also another steep trend line right here, boom. Extend it out a little bit, okay? Like this, right? Trend line. All right, so this could be an interesting setup. This is an older trend line, but it shows the breakout, and this could explain why are we pulling back. Make sure we're at all-time highs. Yes, we are. All-time high prices. This is the highest price Facebook has ever been, according to the charts. Right? Now, with all these lines right here, it's like, what, what does this mean? Right? Extend this one out. It just means that immediate support, again, a little bit of intraday flag, support number one right here at 280, support number two at 268, Bullish target to upside 305 and probably like 320 up here, right? Give it some space, right? Very simple, very simple. Still in the uptrend, okay? There's a gap up right here, okay? Some good news, good earnings. We had that tech committee, the Senate hearing. That was like, uh, that was, uh, I think it was like two or three weeks ago, right? The big four tech companies were all there. So that's why we're taking a look right now. But again, very simple is for this channel for this channel it's remember it's no fomo what's fomo fear of missing out which means just chasing emotional chasing so in stock trading and investing you just never want to be the last person you never want to be the last buyer or seller how do you know you're not going to be the last buyer or seller well, there's so many strategies strategies out there. There's fundamental analysis, like corporate company financial analysis, product services, you know, managerial staff. And then there's technical analysis. There's stock charts. There's patterns. There's price patterns, volume patterns, analysis. Then maybe if somebody is even more advanced, they'll get into quantitative analysis, right? statistics, algorithms, mathematical formulas, right? So you just got to pick one, two, or all three of the main big strategies, right? But the two big ones is fundamental or technical because not everybody is like a, uh, you know, statistician or math mathematician or scientist or a computer programmer, right? So just got to pick one. Or, so me, for me, I use both. I learned both. I started with technical analysis and then I studied fundamental analysis, so I use both. Okay. So, very simple on Facebook, all right? All right, let's end with Bitcoin. Okay, we're gonna end with Bitcoin. If anybody has any last minute uh, stock tickers or crypto tickers, now's, now's the time because we're uh, going to the last phase here. I'm gonna go much faster, I'm trying to go faster, okay? Uh, just just really quick, we'll, we'll do one or two stops on the global and then we'll do crypto because the big news yesterday was that the Japanese prime minister resigned. Japanese prime minister resigned as of yesterday news. So I'm expecting some kind of market reaction to the Nikkei 225 Japanese index. Okay. If this, right, let's look intraday. I don't have the intraday package paid, but this is probably, I just want to show this an example like this. For somebody studying technical analysis, it would be a very interesting phenomenon to, to observe and learn from. Is like, what happens when a prime minister resigns suddenly, right? Not out of the blue, but everybody knew he had health issues, right? And most people are, you know, giving, giving him a respectful uh, goodbye and farewell. So, oops, excuse me, right? Farewell, right? So what you want to see in the market is like, hmm. Devil top, right? Devil top, interesting, right? This is 28th, so this was, according to them, is like yesterday. So today, the Nikkei 225 already had this priced in in terms of like, is this good or bad for Japan? Well, had 3%, you know, tug of war in the price. But again, the larger price pattern on the charts, if you ignore the news, is the M pattern, the double top pattern, right? So 2%, 2% from the breakout down spot would be 22,405. If it breaks down another 2%, 21,945. If it 
breaks down another 2%. Would actually hit this range of like 21, 486 range. Right? Let's get these targets all up here because it'd be an interesting study to see what happens when a prime minister gets replaced basically suddenly. Right? So, so I to practice, it would be interesting to see. It's like, hmm, this is this support trend line is probably not going to hold. Right? Because I already got tested once. So it looks like we're it's about to come back inside here. Where can it come back inside? Well, see right here. 8%, so 4%, about, about the halfway point. Yeah, somewhere here or somewhere around here. So the bearish target would be like this area. Okay. If it turns out to be a strange turn of events, it's like bullish because I'm not... You know, extremely well versed in Japanese politics or the economy, right? Is for the uh, Japanese economy because I don't live there. So basically, this just these targets to the top side is like, hmm, we use a chart price action to give us some bullish targets. But I'm just saying that's gonna be an interesting study to watch out for. Okay, we'll we'll just stop by Kospi Korea right now. It usually inter interestingly because they just had it's already here about the typhoon uh, over there in Asia. Uh, hopefully everybody's okay, physically and mentally, and everything gets better. Um, but, you know, it's going to have an effect on the stock market, right? Let's see. They had the typhoon from like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So, what day was that? That was 25, 26, 27. What day is that on charts? 25, 6, 7. So, basically, stock markets went sideways, right? Stock market went sideways, but still in this upward channel, Right? So again, if this higher high, interesting, it would be interesting if this turns to an M pattern, right? You see this? What if that happens? What if that happens, right? If not, this can turn back into uptrend. So this is a key resistance level to 2,456, next 2,517, okay? This is what I mean, Kospi at... Uh, 2020 all-time highs 2020 well it was over here but 2020 is still in a longer term uptrend right are we going to get a repeat of this action we'll see okay last one we'll just uh just very quickly look at shanghai Kapazo. okay so finding support here there's a morning star pattern so then candle pattern so then the bullish breakout target would be three four five five three five hundred to the top side okay very, very simple. Simple. All right, now we're going to Bitcoin. Here we go. Bitcoin. So let's, uh, I think uh, one person who was asking questions last time wanted to look at Link, XLM Oceans. We'll put them at the bottom right here. Let's go rapid fire through these right now. Okay, so the issue with Bitcoin right now, the issue with Bitcoin right now, if you just erase everything and we're on Bitfinex one day exchange, Bitcoin, US dollar BTC is again a little bit of a folding over losing momentum action right here's the flag right there was this large super large flag right here and then it kept getting extended out and then now it's in an actually if you look very very closely be very sensitive to this daily chart it's in a daily downtrend right because if we if we try to relax and try to control our emotions and fomo and stuff like that it's like well we got rejected from 12,000, one, two, three, four times. 12,000 is resistance for Bitcoin for now. 12,000, 12,500, right? So that so let me draw that as like a yellow box. Okay, 12,000, 12,500 range, all right? So somewhere right here, that is that is the resistance range. Tops are right there. Okay, so what you want to watch out for is, is this turning into a, what I call a hidden head and shoulders? If that's true, and the neckline is right here, even though we did double bottom recently right here on the price. So there's clear support right here. I think Bitcoin bulls do not want this to happen. But if it does happen, 8% to the downside. 8% would be 10,400. Another 8% down if it's extreme crash is 9,000. 
8.7536. This crypto, so draw another one just in case, right? 8.768, right? So if we know this resistance is up here, 12,000, 12,500, even 13,000, right? Now watch out for this potential head and shoulders pattern. So the key levels right now, if you just want very, very key resistance and key support levels, key supports 11,298, key resistance 12,000. So basically, it's we're stuck right now with Bitcoin between 11,000 and 12,000. That's the story of Bitcoin for now, for now. It could very well change, right? It could change, totally. But for now, that's what we're talking about, all right? So again, now, because it's Bitcoin, we could use some technical analysis, okay? The momentum is in the neutral zone, yes, building a little bit, but it's still not proven yet, okay? The price, if we look at the price action, yes, we did find support at 11,300 range. We're going right into the weekend right now, okay? These moving averages still holding, but again, these are all the targets. So, and there's another hidden one right here. What is that? 10,000, like 11,000, okay? But even without the moving averages, we could still figure this out, right? We just use it for some, um, for just some quick reference, right? There's another one right here, like 10,600, all right? So again, if you look at this, the trend line, let's try, let's, can we draw a trend line, secret trend line that mo probably most people are not looking at? Where is it? Maybe one right here, right? Or we could back it up even further. Let's see if this one plays out. All the way from the bottom of COVID-19 crash to now. This would be very ironic if this happens. Boom. Boom. You see this? Basically, all right, the testing point. I think the market's saying, all right, let's come back to this trend line. Test the support right there, 11,400. Then try to rally back up. It's just a potential breathing spot. But then if we lose this trend line, the head and shoulders pattern completes and we start pulling back like, like that, we retest this trend line, fail and break down, then we're probably going to see 10,500 and then like 10,000, 9,500, and then just pick your levels, depending on the charts. Right? It's all making sense. It's all making sense now. It's not random. It's not random. It's just trading. So again, if you look at a weekly chart, on a one-week chart right here, bouncing off this trend line, are we going to bounce a second time off this trend line and try to break to 13, 14, 15,000? That's the big question. We're right here, probably in a week or two. Oops. Probably in a week or two, right? Right there. Let me just circle it for next time, okay? Right here for next time, all right? Then we're going to see, are we going to get a Bitcoin bullish rampage. Is it going to happen? Is it going to do this? Maybe. It depends on the market. It's not my call. Right? So again, Bitcoin. Suspicious support and resistance and trend line levels. Suspicious for Bitcoin. All right, moving on. Ethereum, okay, we want to watch out for here. Again, is there is a head and shoulders potential. Head and shoulders, which means a breakdown. Possible, right? 10%. It could be fake, but if it's real, 10% hitting this first X target like I drew last time, 335. Another 10%. Second X target, 300. Because if you look here in the middle, in a daily chart, there's not much support. So we want to watch out for that. Watch out for that. But again, momentum indicators in the neutral zone showing a bit of momentum continuation possibility. But all these support levels are intact. But again, the key is, yes, we're still in a daily uptrend, so that's why I'm not getting scared. But my experience proves and shows that when people don't want Bitcoin anymore, people really don't want Bitcoin and crypto anymore. And it'll trigger a negative cascade. So professionals and experienced traders might sell. Then retail and, and newer traders might get stopped out or they might panic sell. 
Then we'll have algorithms and robots and quantitative bots shorting on that downward momentum, right? That's why crypto moves so much and the liquidity, the, the float, number of coins available for trading, it, it's all connected, right? Emotions, 24-hour trading, it's all, it's all there, right? So, and crypto, it's always quiet before the storm. It's just people are like just waiting like, oh gosh, is it going to happen? Is it going to happen? And when it happens, it happens big, up or down, okay? So that's the nature of the crypto market. So just want to watch out for that. If not, because if we get global FOMO and people say, you know what, let's bot crypto. I want the crypto. If people say that, then it's our, okay. 440 bullish target, 500 bullish targets to the upside. Okay. Let's watch out for that. XRP. All right. So it, it had an upside down head and shoulders. And right now, just quickly going to look at the price. It's riding this down. But again, in, in a short-term daily downtrend, lower low. Technically, well, it's like a double top, but it's almost like a down, downtrend, right? Lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high somewhere up here, maybe at 30 cents, maybe one more bounce. It's testing this. It's testing here like this line, okay? So I'm not going to draw everything, but you just want to watch out. Media support, like 26, 25 cents, resistance, 28, 29 cents, okay? Just stuck between like that two, three, four cent range. Interesting, Bitcoin Cash falling down out of its consolidation range. Interesting, interesting, okay? Finding its support at this lower level of 261 had a bit of a bearish break. Hmm, suspicious, Bitcoin Cash. All right, so where would the next support levels be? Right, next support, 247, if we keep breaking down. Okay, resistance is now 275, right here. Another resistance right here, 291, 300 range. All right, it's in a daily downtrend. So I'm expecting some kind of lower, lower high bounce, 275 maybe, depending on normal trading. Okay, so that's like a... Uh, Four or five percent balance potential if it happens. Again, Cardano as well. Look at this. Cardano losing multiple support levels in a very, very subtle daily downtrend. So tight, but it's there. All right. How do I know this is not a rally? Because if this was the this was the resistance support levels, it should have went this way. Right? But if we're going down this way, did you do you so do you guys now kind of get a feel for if it breaks down, okay, what does that mean? That means that people are saying it's not going to go higher for now. Let me just take my profit and get out of this if they're profitable. If somebody bought here, they just got stopped out. Also, their shorts and futures is all related. Okay, so if you look here at the previous history of Cardano, it always, I was telling one of the uh, subscribers in the, previous video is it always breaks it breaks the ceiling break the ceiling break the ceiling this one was not broken significant significant coming back down to test the support around nine cents on cardano right so where i'm expecting a lower high bounce lower high bounce at like 12 cents right 12 cents okay possible or break down to nine cents, right? These are two targets right here. Okay, Litecoin, interesting, interesting. Okay, there's way too many targets here. Let me just erase that. What's happening with Litecoin? Resistance, $67, $60. Support, 55, 53 in terms of the price close for longer term traders and investors. All right, not quite head and shoulders pattern, not quite. Not really. But on monthly tightening up, okay? Monthly tightening up, weekly also tightening up. Watch this. Boom, look at this weekly trend line right here. Just like the monthly. Hmm. Hmm. Suspicious pattern, right? So if we can't break, this is why we don't want FOMO in the market. You don't want to go, you do not want to go all in here and have it fail. That's how you lose all your money. 
in the crypto market or 45%, which is really bad. We don't want we don't want that to happen to anybody, okay? This is just educational, right? But that's the education. It's like you, if you know that could happen in the past, it could happen again. With or without COVID-19, right? COVID-19 caused this negative 70%, but just naturally too, you just lose momentum on crypto and you could still crash down negative 75%. So it's totally possible that this could ultimately crash down negative 40% if crypto loses momentum. We're stuck. We're stuck here. Litecoin needs to break through 65 and 70 to maintain its uptrend. It needs to break this high. It needs to go to 75. Maybe test this and then break out like that. If not, I'm expecting all the, look at this support. There's so many in here. There's this one, this one, and this one. Resistance here and here. Let's just leave those. Okay, those are the targets. Going faster here. But Litecoin in a short-term daily downtrend. All right. Yes, someone could say, well, what about this upside down hand and shoulders? Maybe, right? But then again, you want to see the confirmed proof evidence on the chart of the price close. All right, next, Binance Coin. Binance Coin, again, uh, not quite a head and shoulders, although it could be, right? Very, very, very tight one like that. If this is true, if this is true, you could get a pretty serious breakdown on Binance Coin from here, 10%. That would be all the way down here, $19, right? So that could be one interesting support level but if it's not a head and shoulders right not everything is just draw consolidate this in the box right here and so you can even measure the rectangle pattern seven percent plus or minus if it's plus seven percent right here we're going to 25 this previous mark right here if it breaks down seven percent that's somewhere in the twenty dollar range another psychological whole number support so those are two major levels all right but basically it's, it's kind of like a flag flag into a, like a rectangle like this see that all right but it's binance coin okay yes momentum reset you look at your support levels yes it's in an uptrend also it's finding support in this range so again looks like binance coin traders binance just waiting to see what's going to happen in this bitcoin market eos eos right here look at this Hit our resistance target of like $4, retreated back to the support, tested it, bounced up, broke down. Now we're inside these targets exactly. Exactly. In a short-term downtrend. All right, so lower low, lower high, lower low. Trying to seek out its lower high, maybe 325. Possible. Possible upside target, downside possible target, 270 right here. I know there's a lot of marks, but I'm trying to go fast. Right? So it's basically plus or minus 4%, 4% on EOS right now. Okay, Link, uh, let's use, uh, let's see, which one looks better? All right, this one, Link USDT, well, the final three right here. So again, Link, interesting. We drew this trend line together last time, 1350, all right? So it's basically losing momentum and it's flagging right now. All right, so for this one, how I would approach this, just check really quick, okay. Okay, there is a five wave Elliott wave structure. You could draw, I mean, there's two in here. You could draw this big one down here, but let's try the small one. One, let's try the first one. One, two, big, three, four, five. Or what would make more sense is something like, like this, right? It's not perfect, it's a little bit of a stretch, but the psychology is there. The psychology is there. Also on the daily, yes, momentum resetting to neutral for now, holding the support. So again, three targets to the downside, $12, $10, $9, targets to the downside. Also, zoom in. These are just all sorts of supported resistance indicators that are very commonplace. Right, so and they already we already drew them, so we don't even need this indicator. So we could also look right here again. Twenty dollars is the resistance. Immediate resistance is like fifteen to sixteen dollars, right? But if you look at the psychology of this, it's like what is it doing? It's just getting stuck right here. So now people are just waiting on Link. People are waiting. What does that mean? When the crypto market waits, that means they're watching Bitcoin closely they're watching stocks they're watching crypto closely what's going to happen is the question 
All right, so these targets are still in play. Still in play. This, as a trader of crypto, as an investor, now it's the waiting game. Now it's the waiting game. Who has the most patience and emotional control? That is the question. It's the test. All right, but also who has the best analysis too. So let's bring this trend line in. Bring this trend line in. Okay. Now it makes more sense. Because it's like it's like uh it's like Bitcoin. If it's gonna overextend, it's not gonna die down in one day. It's saying, okay, let's let's digest the gains, go sideways, find a support right here, which we are at 15, and maybe we're gonna break out. If it happens, you want to see the price action start to do this. Then if you're a bull, you could be happy, right? But if you're a bear, you don't want to see that. If you're a bear, it's like, well, we want to see this break down, right? So basically, you want to watch for the price in the next like month, next one to two weeks. Stellar, XLM, USD. Again, Stellar lost its tr uh, trend line support right here and, and horizontal support in a daily downtrend. All right. Okay. So now we're seeing lower, low, lower, high, lower, low. How low is it going to go? And then how high is it going to bounce? So right here, let's see. What is that? Nine cents, nine cents, eight cents. Nine cents, eight cents is the lower target. It could even be nine cents, meaning it could be the bottom right now of this, of this leg. Not the bottom of the entire bottom, bottom, but I'm saying right now, like where is it going to bounce? So... Let's see here. XLM, XLM. All right. So again, daily downtrend. Where's it going to bounce to? Possibly retest of this 10 cents. Possibly 10 cents. Right? Very simple. XLM is, is this one was more simple because once it started riding this trend line, then that's basically the only thing you need to watch out for. Until it breaks down, like now so we might get a retest boom and then test and come back down we'll see okay ocean btc i do not uh trade this at all but at the same time if you look at ocean just consolidating the gains this looks like robots almost a little bit of bot trading all right it's really messy right here because i was showing somebody examples of long-term analysis the breakout support and resistance levels at play but now if you look at what's happening right now and just the media price action, it is a flag. It is a flag. What do I mean? This. Okay. So now what remains to be seen is if Bitcoin goes up in price, Ocean Protocol most likely will also follow it up in price. The reverse inverse is also true. If Bitcoin goes down in price, altcoins and Ocean Protocol will most likely also follow and go down. So the whole market is just watching Bitcoin, basically. People are starting school, people are working, and people are watching Bitcoin, watching stocks, if they're investing and trading, right? So how do we know this? Okay, we can measure, uh, we can measure the flag, or we can measure the flagpole. If we measure the, well, let's do a conservative target. If we measure the flag, 10%, 10% from the breakout, would be this resistance level here. Another 10% would probably be the top of this stick right here, this shadow wick up here, two levels, right? So it's like 51.58, 56.85. We break down 10% to the downside. 3893, boom, right there. Another 10% would bring us back down to 3445, all right? So now, you have to be careful, especially if you're, if someone's trying to trade an altcoin. So let me check something really quick. Let me check the uh, market cap on Ocean Protocol. Let's see. How big or small is this coin? Ocean. Let's see. Uh, market cap. Uh, market cap in USD is, uh, what is this? 194 million. Okay, so it's a large coin. 13 million USD volume per day. Circulating supply of coins, 359 million. Ocean. Is it a token? This is called crypto. That's a token. 
Yeah. 359 million tokens. I'm reading the description. Interesting. Okay, with a with a maximum supply of 1.4 billion ocean tokens. All right, so it's got some liquidity inside of it. All right, so just making sure it's not like the most random uh, altcoin ever. But in USD, it's 54 cents approximately. In USD, it's 54 cents. All right, just take that into into consideration. Basically, basically came from like less than. Well, it came back from really small, right? So we just want to watch out for this. In crypto, in crypto, when something goes 10x, like I'm saying last time, when something goes 10x, right from the bottom, or 5, 5x, or 10x, or 7x, it's like, hmm, we'll just watch out for it. But again, right here, Ocean, all right? And I'm, I'm not erasing everything for time just in case somebody has a question the next time. Is just, is it going to go plus or minus 10%? That's all depending on Bitcoin and the traders. All right. Very, very simple. Very simple. All right, everybody. I uh, just want to say thank you so much for watching. Please remember if you like this uh, live stream on stocks and crypto analysis, please remember to click subscribe, hit the like button. Turn on notifications and consider donating to support this channel to keep this technical analysis going. It's always appreciated so many donates to Patreon or PayPal links will be in the description below. In the future, if you have a question for another stock ticker or crypto that you'd like me to analyze, please leave a comment in the chat box or in the comments. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a great weekend.